What's up guys, Charon here with Rise Magic. I hope you're enjoying 2020, the brand new decade. I am still stuck back here in 2019. It's actually New Year's Eve, we still got the Christmas tree and everything. I wanted to film this video for you guys real quick though because I wanted to cover something extremely important for you to know if you're an aspiring magician, and that is the concept and idea of equivocate. Commonly known as the magician's choice is a way that you can influence your spectator when you give them a seemingly free choice so that you always end up the winner. If you give them two choices, you always get the one that you want. Let's say you want them to pick their card or pick a side of the deck that doesn't have their card or something like that. You can always end up making sure you end up with the side that you want, the choice that you want, and they end up with the one that they seemingly think that they want. If you guys want a boring one page write up that'll put you to sleep just like it's sixth grade math class all over again, you know what? Click out of this video, go check out the one page Wikipedia write up. I'll actually leave the link in the description. If you don't want the fun explanation, just, just get out of here now because I know what you need. When I was in school, I needed that over the top visual explanation that will leave you with a moment that you'll never forget so that you actually understand the concept because of the similes and metaphors, all those sorts of things. So let's just say for this example, we have nine three week old puppies. Would you look at that? So let's say of these nine puppies, I have a favorite. Let's say this one on the top, the light brown one with the blue collar. And I want to make sure that if I can only pet and cuddle with one of them, it's going to be him. Let's use Equivoque in The Magician's Choice to make sure that we end up with our favorite pup right here. So out of these nine incredible puppies, this guy right here, he's my favorite. But I'm going to let someone else choose and I'm still gonna end up with my favorite. And yes, when we draw an explanation this big, it will be a little obvious what I'm doing, but that's the point. So let's split these puppies into two groups. We have one, two, three, four. This is gonna be a little more difficult than I thought. One, two, three, four. And then we have five over here. So we have five here and four here. Pick a side, any side you want. That side, okay, we'll get those guys out of here. They're no longer in the discussion. Now, we're just left with these five over here. We have these two and these three. We have these two and these three right here. Pick, pick a group. This group, okay, we'll get rid of these three guys. It's okay, guys. And now we're just left with two. Pick one. Pick one of these two. Which one are you pointing to? The black one? Okay, you take the black one. And I'll take my favorite boy right here. Hey, buddy. Now that you saw in such an unforgettable matter, I'm sure you understand the concept, but you might say, won't people figure that out? And the true answer is yes. If you present it like that, people will figure it out. The key to this working is that the choice doesn't seem like it has that big of consequences. It needs to be offbeat, it needs to be, yeah, just pick one. If you have a Lamborghini Gallardo on one side and a Toyota Prius on the other and say, hey, just pick one, and they always end up with the Prius, they're gonna figure it out. If there's too much stakes, it's not gonna work. So you might say, why would I even wanna learn this? Well, that's twofold, two reasons. One, I'm gonna teach you a couple cool, practical ways to use this in magic tricks to extend your performance, to build your routine, to make your tricks more interactive and make them last longer. And two, this is just the building blocks. This is the foundation. This is just the basics of the concept of equivoque. As I'm sure some of you guys have already commented down below, this is extremely basic, all right? There are ways you can layer and branch off your equivoque language so that it seems much more indetectable. But I'll go over that in another video if you guys are interested. For now, let's get into some classic magic applications. And yes, even though I am in 2019, I can still read the comments. I can still read the future, of course. And you know, some of those comments that I was reading said something about you guys really want to see like an adorable puppy montage. <laughs>
Let's take a simple ACR, ambitious card routine trick. You go through the cards, they pick a card, the queen of clubs, you pass it to the top like any good card control could do. At this point, you have the deck of cards in hand with their card on top. How do we build interaction here? Now normally, you could just say, here, shuffle a deck. But in this case, their card's on the top, so if you let a random spectator shuffle a deck, their card's gonna get lost in the middle. Here's a way to make it more natural and introduce interaction. You split the deck in two and say, pick a side. If they pick this side, congratulations, they can shuffle it all they want. If they pick the side that has their card on top, you say, okay, we'll use this side, shuffle this side. So either way, you're gonna end up with the half of the deck that has their card on top. So when you shuffle it, you can make sure you retain their card on top. Once they're done shuffling their side of the deck, you can just take it and shuffle it back into your side while leaving their card on top. There's also a super natural and easy way to do this. Lots of times you ask a spectator or a shuffler, they're gonna say, oh, I can't shuffle, I'm not that good at it. It's too hard. Then you can naturally say, oh, well, sometimes it's easier to shuffle with half the deck and pick a side. And then, like I'm saying, if they pick this side, the side that doesn't have their card on top, just give it to them. Say, okay, here you go. If they pick the side that does have their card, it's like, okay, we'll use this side. Here, take this side. But it's very important that you're not saying take and keep. You just give and take in your own brain because that language can make it seem like they didn't really have a free choice if you know what I mean. This is my favorite way to use equivocate because the stakes aren't that big seemingly in their head. They're just taking a side of the deck to shuffle. But in your mind, you're keeping the side that has their top card and the trick lasts longer. You have some added interaction and then sure enough, with whatever reel you wanna do, even after they shuffle the deck, their card is still on top. But I shuffled it so it wasn't the queen of clubs. Anyway, it's a great way to make your tricks longer and incorporate this method. Get used to it so you can use it for some grander scale tricks in the future or to swindle yourself, your favorite puppy, to snuggle. Now this second way to use equivoque is more of its own magic trick, but it's not anything that's gonna win you a Maris Got Talent, okay? I'll explain it really quick, but just know that this is a trick that's all about your language and I'll explain right here. So what we do is we take three of one color and one of the other color. And this is just an explanation of equivoque in its own right. What you're gonna do is say, no matter what, you'll end up with the red card or the black card if you do it the other way around. You flip them over and you have to keep track so there's the red card when you shuffle it up of where the red card is, so the red card's on top. Obviously, you're actually shuffling it up for them so that they could have no idea which one it is. You keep track again, so now it's third, and then you're gonna space the four out. So now I know that this is the red card. I can do any fancy shuffling, whatever, just mix them up. Then I say, here, just touch two cards. Remember, this is the red one. So you can touch any two cards you want. So since the spectator touched one of the red cards, since they touched these two, we'll keep those two in the game. Take the other two away, all right, say touch one. Take that away and they're left with the red card. And you can keep doing this and keep doing this and keep doing this. So that's the red card right there. You shuffle it up, they touch two. This time she didn't touch the red cards. So we take those away, touch one, and you always end up with the red card. Now, this isn't the best trick. And I'm sure some of you down below are gonna say, that's not how you use equivoque. That's too basic. Yes, it is but it does work on some people and you'd be surprised on how well it works depending on your language. For instance, when you're taking away the cards, don't say, all right, we'll take these, okay, and you'll keep these. You wanna stay away from those words. You just wanna say, all right, all right, and just move them. You don't wanna say specific words about taking and keeping because then it might trigger their IQ to spike up a little bit below the low you know, levels it was, never mind. Never insult your spectators. But this trick, while seemingly useless, it's a way to incorporate it into your routines. Because let's say I'm doing a mind reading trick, right? And mind reading tricks and the invisible deck, those seem utterly impossible. So what I like to do when I perform, and this is just my personal style, I like to do something unbelievable. So let's say I, I read your mind and guess what card you were thinking of? And they say, John, how the heck did you do that? And I said, well, it's just little ways I can influence your thoughts. And then I show them that trick right there. 
If they figure out or if they don't, it doesn't matter because that still doesn't equivocate to the unbelievable, amazing trick I just did for them while reading their mind. So I brought them up, showed them something unbelievable, then broke it down to something understandable and said, oh, what I did with the mind reading is basically that on steroids, but let me show you what happens when you take that concept to the maximum. Then I show them the invisible deck. Then their brain's broken and they're like, wait, you can't influence me that hard. I'm like, I just did guys. I just did. All right, we're all good now. He's just a little bit camera shy from all you people watching all over the world in 2020. But I hope you enjoyed this inside look at the magician's choice. This is the basic beginner building blocks to this concept and idea, okay? It can get a lot more complex. And if you're interested in those complexities, be sure to leave a comment down below. I can put on my reading goggles and glasses and go much more in depth. Our little buddy needs to go back to sleep. So I'll see you guys next week. Hope you enjoyed. I'm bringing you back to mommy. It's okay. It's all right.